the battery show. I've got a media pass today, so I'm all excited to have some really cool interviews. So this seems to be very interesting for everybody. <laughs> I think this is an electrified Bronco. Yeah, we're a legacy EV. We worked with Gateway Bronco to build this Bronco. We do the EV power plant portion, both the training, the parts distribution, and then we can help with the install as much or as little as you need. Hi everybody, I have Yan Ye here from Battery Brunch. Ah, so the Battery Brunch is a monthly event that uh, Linda Jing and I organized. Um, we started about two years ago with as a literal brunch of battery professionals in the Bay Area. And now we've gone uh, virtual, so the last event that we had had more than 500 people attend. Um, we're trying to really foster a uh, healthy and vibrant uh, community of battery professionals. So if you're interested in batteries, or if you work in batteries, come join us. We're really excited to see Cascadia Motions here because they have some really cool stuff and of course we would love to put that in the Jeep. So we're here right. talking with Larry here and uh, he can tell you a little bit about what's uh, what they're showing and, and the car that they brought here. Yeah. So the car is a uh, Peloton Motorsports D2. So you can tell it's easy to get in but hard to get out. Yes. It's got a lot, really good upper body strength. I want to try that too. <laughs> with high heels. Yeah. <laughs> You're more flexible than I am. That's for sure. No problem. <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah, okay. We'll have to hire you. Hi, Luca. Hello. What are we having here? Well, what you see is a very shiny example of an in wheel motor. It's uh, the closest you can get to a software to find a car. That's a pretty cool color, indeed. Yeah, so, so it's kind of like that. Uh, poison green that we're trying to use to you know make the environment better and green technologies and all these things so it's uh, part of our DNA being uh, visible and at the same time very high tech you had some thoughts right before when we were talking about the automotive industry in general we find rarely the opportunity like what we have you know in this decade where so many things in the automotive are changing at once so it's uh, everyone has to do very big steps, especially the big OEMs, compared to what they've been doing for the last hundred years. So th even this is not a new idea. It's been electric cars, in-wheel motors, they've all been done by Porsche and others back in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s. But it seems like technology has evolved so much that the combustion engine has essentially become obsolete. Uh, not everywhere, but at least for the segments that we're using for passenger travel. And uh, it's a very exciting time at the moment in the automotive. Awesome. I am here with Kuliki and Sofa and they have something really cool going on here. Hi Lloyd, nice to meet you. Hi Veronica, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing fabulous. Kuliki and Sofa is a global leader in the cell to CCA interconnect space for electric vehicles. And what we're displaying here today is our new large area bonder, which takes the individual cells and assembles them into very large modules or cell to pack. I told you that my focus today is on recycling and I find it on a recycler here. So I am with Max here from the company Recycle. So uh, my cycle is a 50 mile battery recycling and resource recovery company. Uh, we have a smoke and a milk pump that's designed to maximize the recovery of critical battery materials and reintegrate them back into the supply chain. So our goal is to, one, have a safe and sustainable solution for end of life batteries, and two, uh, ensure there's a domestic and secure supply of nickel, cobalt, and lithium in the future to address any potential supply shortfalls that may be more effective for the Thank you, Melanie. Just found a company DuPont. They invented nylon. Oh, I wanted to do a video now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, Gabriel. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? We have our battery demonstrator tool here. Uh, one of the things that we'll try to highlight is we have our cooling plate. Uh, prototype here. What do you say to these oversized prismatic cells? No, no, I'm just kidding here. I always
always have a lot of fun moments in my videos, so you have to excuse me. Oh, no, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you so much. But with our oversized cells here, you know, again, we're trying to show some of the other products that we have. Some of these are more traditional DuPont products. Um, we've got some adhesives in here, some of the Zytel covers. Everything to keep the battery pack safe. As safe as we can. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. You know, about 15 years ago, I built up a 500 horsepower Subaru. But what a lot of people don't know is I had an AEM controller inside. And I was really excited a few years ago to see that AEM was moving into the EV market space. And uh, really excited now that we're working on our Jeep project that we're probably going to use AEM products in our Jeep. You're awesome. Unbelievable. So much energy here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so you have your park, reverse, neutral, and then you have a wake switch manually, and this is your ignition. So, so the turtle for when Veronica drives and the rabbit for when I drive? Or what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Sounds wonderful. Be great in your Jeep. Yep. So I am talking to Corby from Pyrothin right now and they have something here that I am very much interested in because everybody knows I am into thermal runaway, thermal runaway propagation and this seems to be going in this direction. So Corby, what do we have here? So uh, Aspen Aerogels, Aerogel Technology Company. Here or for use in cell to cell or to impede or stop thermal runaway between battery cells. Okay, so for this kind of example here, do you think it would stop the thermal runaway completely or you, it would slow it down? Again, that, that's really dependent on the customer requirements. What you see here in these displays are both prismatic and pop cells uh, that have various thicknesses of the material applied straight to the to the cells. Just as an example, obviously the actual design would look a little different from this inside of a module configuration. Again, really it's up to the OEM or the module manufacturer or battery manufacturers to set what those requirements are. You know, and then we'll design the actual thermal barrier with the use of whether it's our materials or others to achieve their thermal prop goals. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great show. Thank you. This is an all-electric school bus. This is how it looks like under the hood. And I think so, these are the batteries under the floor of the bus. They open it for me so I can go inside. Six battery packs. I only know that from the movies. <laughs> this is so awesome. This is my absolute highlight of the show. An all electric school bus. Maybe I want to become a bus driver. I love it. I absolutely love it. be talking to Honeywell right now. They have a very interesting and very big sensor. So let's see what's that all about. <laughs> yes, yes. So and where are we in which step are we needing the sensor here? Uh, so this particular sensor is, is used mostly in the pressing section. Uh, so we use to measure total thickness of the material. So it's one for anode material and one for cathode material in this pressing section. We can also do this to measure uh, in the dry section of the coating. What is the typical thickness that we are measuring here? This one is around, what, 200 microns? Yeah, 200 this plus micron. One. We measure within around one micron accuracy. Hi, what are you doing here? What is 6K Energy? So, 6K, we've developed uh, a unique uh, microwave plasma production technology. Microwave plasma material production, production technology. technology. Okay. Um, essentially, we are taking what is normally done with legacy processes that require huge chemical plants that generate a lot of waste, that consume a lot of energy, very costly, not very sustainable, and replacing them with a very low cost, single step, continuous process. That sounds really cool. So, how big is this? So this, this is an image of a system that's almost full size. So uh, we have multiple divisions. This is a system that's in our additive materials division. So they're producing high value alloy materials for the additive manufacturing market. Um, we're in full scale production in Pennsylvania with these systems. So that real height of that system is about say 15, 16 feet in, in real okay. life. And so one of those systems 
can do about 120 times per year. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. What do we have here? Uh, so this is a new product that we released called the uh, CRX. So Fanuc uh, released two versions of this robot, one long arm, one short arm. And right now what it's doing, it's doing a inspection. Uh, it is inspecting these battery cells to make sure that all of the components are there. Uh, SR3IA, a uh, member of our Scara family, which is showcasing our circular line tracking uh, using vision. So there is a camera that is upstream from the robot that takes a picture, and then it's uh, tracking the positional data with an encoder, a tracking encoder, so that once it's in the robot's work envelope, the robot knows exactly where it is, the robot can pick it up and orient it to be placed on the belt.